Hi guys, this is Jewel. Um, I want to read today in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to start with verse 11, but I am going to give a little bit of background. Um, and I just, my, my prayer is that this would just be an encouragement to you guys um, in more identification truths, okay? So the background to this is in the previous chapter in 1 Kings chapter 18, that was when Elijah had his showdown with the um, prophets of Baal and the, um, and the Lord manifested himself as being the true God, of course, by answering Elijah's prayer by sending down fire from heaven to, uh, to accept and to take up and to consume um, the burnt offering or, or the offering, I should say, that Elijah had offered for God. Um, and this was after he allowed the prophets of Baal with, with their altar to cry and, and like try to get the attention of their God all day long. And their God, of course, never answered. And then Elijah prepared his altar and then prayed and the Lord answered. And then afterwards, um, Elijah had all the prophets of Baal that were there killed. Okay. So in this chapter, Jezebel, okay, uh, sends a message starting with verse one, but I'm just going to summarize. Uh, you can read it if you wish. Jezebel sends a message to Elijah saying um, that I'm going to make sure that you were dead, that you were killed. And then Elijah just, he becomes afraid and he runs away and Let's see, um, he runs away. Uh, a day's journey, we're gonna start with verse four actually. But he, Elijah himself, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Okay. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came upon the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Okay, so we're gonna just pause there for just a second. So over here in John, the Gospel of John chapter 21, um, Jesus had been crucified, he died and was buried, and he had resurrected, okay? And the, the disciples were just very, they felt so defeated, just as Elijah did back in 1 Kings chapter 19, right? The disciples were so defeated and so in verse three, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing, I go with fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. So they're feeling like, yeah, we just, you know, yeah, what, what, why did we go through all that we went through? What was the point? It seems so pointless. But in verse four, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, children, 
have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. So here we are in 1 Kings chapter 19, that Elijah is exhausted. He's just gotten this message from Jezebel. I'm coming to get you. I mean, you are mine. I mean, you, you're done. You are dead, right? And so Elijah becomes very discouraged. He's like, everything I did in the previous chapter, you know, he's thinking all of that was in vain. All of that, even when the Lord showed himself mighty, um, Elijah's thinking, I'm no better than my father's. You know, Elijah f- felt like he was not doing any better of a job reaching people for God than anyone else had been. But think about it. It was never Elijah's fight to begin with, was it? Elijah, yes, the Lord used him mightily in 1 Kings chapter 18. But I have to remember that I have to rest in the Lord because nothing is my fight. Does that make sense? I just want to encourage you guys to, I know in my previous message, I talked about how the um, the armor of God talked about in Ephesians uh, chapter six actually is steeped in identification truth, right? And so, um, I may link that video in the description box below so you can listen to it. So it's about resting in Jesus. And here in John chapter 21, you know, Jesus had been crucified. He died. He was buried. He had resurrected. But the disciples just were so discouraged. And here in verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, come and dine. You know, just as the angel back in 1 Kings chapter 19, you know, um, fed Elijah twice, you know, and Elijah did not have to find that food. He did not have to cook that food. The angel did it for him. Like the work was done for Elijah and on that food, right, on that meat, on that nourishment, Elijah was strengthened to go 40 days unto Mount Horeb. Jesus here is saying, come and dine. I am your nourishment. I am your bread. I am your wine. I am your strength. Come to me, all who are weary, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am lowly and meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So that was, I was paraphrasing, but it's like Matthew 11, starting with verse 28. But I was paraphrasing. I'm sure I butchered that, but I also talk about that in my previous video, which I will link in the box below. So Jesus then cometh in verse 13 and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. And this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So... Here we are back in 1 Kings chapter 19, and we're going to start with verse 8. And Elijah arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat, 
40 days and 40 nights unto horror of the mount of God. Jesus is our strength. He is our meat. Verse 9, And when he, Elijah, came thither unto a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? In verse 10, he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Verse 11, And he, God said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And we're going to skip down to verse 18, how the Lord responds to Elijah. This is the Lord speaking. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And so let's not forget that if the Lord leads us to do something, it's not us doing it, right? And so the, the results of that, whether perceived to be good or bad, that's not on us. The burden is not on us. Therefore, the results are not on us, right? If we are resting in Christ and we are letting him flow through us and he is working through us, then as we serve him, actually it's not us doing it, it's the Lord doing it, then should we not also leave the results up to him, right? It's not, it was never our fight. It's the Lord's fight. The Lord will fight for himself. He will fight for his word. He promises us that his word will never go out into the world and return unto him void. That's the Lord speaking. That's the Lord's promise. We can't make that happen. Only the Lord can. So only the Lord is responsible, is responsible for how he chooses to work through someone. And only he is responsible for what results out of that and what comes out of that. And sometimes we unintentionally can get involved in a shouting debate. And, and I, what I do, I just picture a, a huge like or a huge place, right? Where everybody is in one corner, this huge mob, right, is in one corner just shouting one above another and the noise is getting louder and louder and louder just you know when the mob was yelling crucify jesus crucify him you know and 
And so I just picture this mob just shouting and debates and just yelling at one another. And here's Jesus by himself in the opposite corner. And he's whispering, come and dine. Come. But nobody can hear him above the shouting. But only if you're resting in him and not listening to the noise, will you be able to hear that still, small voice. So my prayer is that you become encouraged with this today. Let Jesus be your bread and your wine. Let him be your nourishment. Rest in him. It's not your fight. The results are not up to you. Jesus is in control. Jesus sets the temperature. He is the thermometer. So regardless of what the temperature seems to be, Jesus is the one who was ultimately in control of all of that. So Lord, I just pray you will use this message to encourage my brothers and sisters, help them to, to rest, help me to remember that I need to let you, Lord Jesus, yourself be the source of my food and my drink through your word, because you are the word. And I pray that you will use this and glorify yourself through this. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.